Achoo. Hey guys, it's Dr. Klein. We're talking about sneezing today. A lot of people injuring themselves from sneezing is a pretty violent event, if you will think about it. So we get a lot of pressure in the diaphragm, but also in the pelvic floor, which is actually considered a diaphragm structure. So you do have, you have two diaphragms. So there's your there's a little tidbit for the day. But a lot of people knock out different areas. Sometimes it's because how they turn their head or it's all from the neck so they can actually sprain a joint in the neck. Some of them actually knock a rib out in the diaphragm which attaches to your lumbar spine, attaches also to these ribs down here at the bottom. So we can actually pull on one of the ribs if your diaphragm is very tight. A lot of us round in the mid back when we sneeze. So that's a lot of pressure right here on those vertebrae. So that can sprain joints in there, especially when a rib goes out. It actually has to tear a bit of tissue to, to really go out and dislocate like that. So that takes some time to recover. It can also lower back. A lot of people kind of bend forward and they get all that pressure in the low back and they can actually injure some of these joints down here in the lumbar spine. So you can essentially hurt anything in your back because it's a lot of pressure. So things to be careful about are, uh, well, right now with allergies, but also this Corona thing I keep hearing about is you don't want to think about standing up straight and sneezing right there, right? Because it's going out that way. That's why a lot of people do this, is they're, they're aiming it at the floor. So I understand that. But in a perfect world, there's no one around. That's actually the best way to do it. Actually, if there's no one around, just let it go. Let it go. Or just cover like that. Get your spine in extension. But if you're around, you're in Walmart, you're shopping, you don't want to be that guy who's sneezing and scaring everyone. So the last thing we want to do is sneeze when you're rounding the mid-back, or sneeze where it's all from the head, or even from the low back. A lot of people sneeze the whole body thinking that's good, but you don't want the bend to happen here. You want to think foundation training. You want to think hinging at the hips when you sneeze. So as you sneeze, try to get that motion with those hips. So the hips are taking all that pressure. And if you're a person that always sneezes off to one side, if you're at the desk, that can pattern you over time. A couple sneezes in a row, you'd be fine. But if you keep sneezing all that internal pressure in one direction, over and over again, eventually you're going to injure something in the back. So pay attention to which side you're sneezing on, which, which elbow you're sneezing into. Just try to switch it up. And you know, any combat veteran will tell you, practice for when the moment happens. So sneeze, it's like you're not really going to think about it, you don't have time. But if you've kind of trained yourself, you're thinking about this hip hinge, or even if you're in your desk chair, you're sitting there, you can slide that chair back really quick. Do a little slide, sneeze, come back up. That way you're not getting a ton of rounding in the back. You're actually kind of hinging from the hips, letting that motion happen right here where the spine stays straight and then you can sneeze, switch arms. You can even test it out. See which arm feels kind of, or which way feels tighter to you. So the tighter side is your body's naturally not gonna to wanna to go into restriction. It wants to take the easy route when you're not thinking about it, when it's involuntary. So if you can force yourself to automatically go into the more restricted side when you sneeze, that can help prevent injury as well, because then you're actually sneezing into your restrictions, which actually can help correct something. You think about it, a sneeze can knock something out, a sneeze can actually put something back into place. Let's look at the pelvic floor. We talked about where the diaphragm attaches, because the diaphragm, lots of pressure. So that's your decompression breathing. When you're standing, if you're practicing on going to foundation training and really breathing in there, expanding that diaphragm in 360 degrees like this, where you're sucking the belly in instead of pushing the belly out, you're lengthening, inflating the chest, you'll feel that stretch. You should feel it right in through these muscles. They're serrat uh, serratus posterior muscles. Serratus posterior inferior muscles, if you want to be really specific with me. But that's where you should kind of feel those stretching. That opens up that. If we're always breathing from those, getting those decompression breaths in, from when you sneeze and all that pressure suddenly hits your diaphragm, you're not gonna injure the back as much because that diaphragm's already gonna bend, kind of loosened up. You know, it's when it's tight and restricted and you gotta sneeze, right? If you never used a muscle before, you kind of stagnate, you start moving again. That's when that muscle has a tendency to tear or it can tear the joints. So the diaphragm's big, but also pelvic floor is a big issue with a lot of people. Now, normally I'd say go to your chiropractor, get your tailbone lined up, but that's kind of like a bad joke, joke right now. No one can get in. Um, pelvic floor, also a lot of intense pressure when you sneeze. So the pelvic floor actually, let's see where we can get this from a good view. Get a pen out here. All right. So we have 
Pelvic floor attaching to the coccyx bone, your tailbone, coming here right into the pubic bones there. So same as the diaphragm, it's kind of just supports the organs, but also it has structures moving through it. So when you sneeze, it really tightens up. So a lot of people, it's really stiff. And I've done a video series before called The Posture Report. So if you want to a link for that, leave a comment below, say, hey, where's that posture report? But I talk a lot about the diaphragm and the pelvic floor and which posture types tend to be weaker. Because some will have a stronger diaphragm, but a weak pelvic floor muscle and vice versa. Usually it's the people where the hip structure has gone forward, have the weak pelvic floor, because both hips turn out, because we have a lot of muscles running from, the one is the obturator internus, which attaches, if we can see, yeah, kind of right there in these muscles right there. It's kind of hard to work backwards. It's like cutting your own hair, which I haven't done yet, but I'm getting there. Obturator internus runs there, runs through the lesser sciatic notch, so that's right there runs to that hip bone. So if that hip's turned out, that's gonna pull because all those pelvic floor muscles attach into that obturator internus muscle. So if that's turned out like that way, that's really going to affect the pull of the pelvic floor. So the pelvic floor is gonna be tight on one side, pulling the sacrum to one side. So think about even like cerebral spinal fluid, which is really great for your immune system, great for toxicity and getting everything out. That's gonna be um, changed because the pumping mechanism from the sacrum so the occiput is gonna be off a little bit because even because that tailbone, that keystone that holds and supports your spine, not just mechanically, but it's unable to pump that fluid to your discs and to your nerve. That's what we call interthecal pressure, not interfecal pressure. I said that to my wife last night. She's like, no, no interthecal is the, the, the sac that has the cerebral spinal fluid in that encases the spinal cord. That's like your shock absorber when you get blunt trauma, which a sneeze is kind of a lot like blunt trauma. So that protects that nerve. So if we have poor cerebral spinal fluid, we can actually really damage the, you know, essentially the central nervous system with a sneeze. Um, and, you, and you might even notice, the more I've, I've done foundation training and this type of breathing, my allergies don't affect me that much. And that's hard to connect those dots. But as soon as you start looking at how stress and your body's reacts to toxicity just increases your essentially your autoimmunity your body is just a little hyper vigilant because there's so much toxicity is fighting so much so that's where sneezes come from and that's where a lot of gut disorders come from is just constant stress it's not mental stress all the time either it's mechanical stress stuff like this where the pelvic floor is just twisted a little bit and that just throws off the function because if this is twisted it's like a towel that's twisted it's affecting the skull a lot of times we'll notice chiropractic wise this sacrum will be twisted one way and the occiput is actually mirroring that it's twisted the other way to try to maintain some of that cerebral spinal fluid pump same thing if, you, if you're twisted too think about your spine being twisted when you sneeze and there's torsion in the spine that's likely going to hit a weak area in the spine and cause an injury as well so the less we get more we can work on strengthening that spine the less we're going to get damage and, the, and we're also going to limit the rotation so we talked about obturator internus, which the pelvic, some of the pelvic floor muscles attach to, running into the hip. Another one that kind of comes in here to the sacrum is not really a pelvic floor muscle, but the piriformis muscle, which we talked about before. A little bit higher, runs also to the hip, same kind of spot as the obturator internus. The other one is the coccygeus muscle, which attaches here to the ischial spine. And that one runs kind of from coccyx sacrum area, right there. And that one tends to be tighter on the opposite side than some of the other pelvic floor muscles, which are a little more inferior to that one. So we'll see that torsion there. Well, that one's tight. That's when you can use your tennis ball to kind of uh, try sitting on different spots, having two different tennis balls, putting on those kind of trigger point areas. And it's a bit of trial and error to figure that out, but that's a good exercise to do. Try to get up really tall and then breathe. You'll feel that pressure in that pelvic floor. Even just without a tennis ball, when I breathe, I can feel that pelvic floor engage. That's that anchoring that we talk about in foundation training. If you're looking for more foundation training, go to their website or even go to our videos, go to playlists. There's a whole five series, five videos on anchoring, just some different ideas that I explore to help you understand. Really, anchoring is engagement, strengthening, of the pelvic floor muscles to bring balance, but also strength so you don't injure yourself when you're sneezing and all that sudden pressure hits that pelvic floor muscle. That's another big structure. It really gets attacked by the sneezes. Uh, what was I saying there? So yeah, check out those videos on 
anchoring to help you understand the decompression breathing process, but also engaging those hips because that same posture type, which I call the runway model, it's usually they think they have great posture where they push the hips back to bring their head up. So they're really extending, but they're putting all this pressure there. And the pelvic floor actually gets really weak over time because it's actually not supporting the structure anymore. It's been pushed forward, so you're not stacked. Your shoulder and your hip don't line up. And then we have the kind of the opposite, which is the cheerleader, which has almost what you think about a sway back, but it's actually increased lordosis, really bending at the spine more like this. And they can look kind of similar, but the difference will be is that the cheerleader posture will have the shoulder and hip lined up, a lot more curve in the low back spine, whereas the runway model will look kind of similar, but the pelvic structure will be forward and they'll be leaning back. Again, leave a comment if you want more information on that. I'll send you the posture report series, which talks about the pelvic floor, the diaphragm, those different posture types and their connections. A lot about cerebral spinal fluid too, and the breathing muscles and all that. But I'll shut up now. Those are my ideas on sneezing. Remember to switch sides, practice a little bit, which I know sounds dumb, but it's easier to prevent an injury from a sneeze than to fix it. Now the fix is tough because you've, you've sprained something. So essentially it's ice and rest, getting to see your chiropractor when you can, or doing your foundation training, which could actually, you know, think about all that pressure. You're actually getting really similar to a sneeze when you get that big decompression breath in, you're actually kind of stretching, and that can actually push a rib back into place slowly over time. Sometimes you'll get that big breath in, you'll really breathe into that area, try breathing into these muscles, and then these muscles up here, those uh, serratus posterior muscles, you breathe in, breathe in, try breathing into both at the same time. Sometimes you get a little pop in the rib. You can actually relocate a rib just with this decompression breathing process, and that's really all I'd recommend besides ice, and kind of rest after you've injured something. It's much easier to prevent it, is what I'm trying to say. So it might sound dumb to sneeze with a hinge, and I'll go through that one more time for those of you who missed it, is you're just letting that motion happen at the hip joint. So you're this way. If there's no one around, you can just sneeze toward the ground if you're not, if you're outside walking. But otherwise, hit that elbow when you sneeze. And remember to try to switch sides. It's actually really similar to an exercise I do, which kind of looks like that. So you're getting your exercise in while sneezing. Who's going to tell you that? Hopefully that helps. Hopefully that can help prevent some injuries. And hopefully we'll open back up so we can deal with all this stuff that's going on. Again, leave a comment if you want any links to those videos, because I'm not going to link it if nobody cares. Take care, guys. Have a safe day. Stay healthy.